is Nenad Kerkezov, you know me as Tarantula. We will show you how to do breakout rates. Very, you can earn very good pip spirit. And this exactly. will be our first meeting for breakout rates. Exactly. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I have actually a, a bit unusual start here. I just wanted to show you quickly uh, before we start um, the you know Admiral Markets website. This is the Czech one. Uh, I tried to change it to English somehow. My website browser is not working too well, but I wanted to show you quickly where you can get some uh, cool information regarding analysis. Uh, we have here fundamental, technical, and even wave analysis. So uh, those few avid waivers uh, among you, you can find uh, data analysis there, but also some technical analysis. So I thought that would be interesting for you to, uh, you know, to take a look at that so that uh, you have an idea. All right, um, let's move on to our PowerPoint slides that we had prepared. Trading breakouts, as Tarantula already said. Uh, before we start, just a quick risk disclosure. Uh, please be aware that uh, trading for exchange, especially a margin, is a high risk. And uh, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor, uh, advisor for consultation. Um, this video and webinar is for educational purposes only. So please take a look at this disclaimer. And we thank you for your attention on that. Once again, welcome to the special webinar hosted by Admiral Markets. And uh, I already you know, showed you the website, but here are some other great links to look at. AdmiralMarkets.com, Platform Software MetaTrader 4. And uh, here you can take a look at the spreads, Forex Admiral Pro Trading accounts. Okay, so today's goal, all the ins and outs on trading breakouts and avoiding false ones. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at what is a breakout, why is it good to trade breakouts, when to trade breakouts, and how to trade breakouts. So it's really going to be uh, all inclusive uh, as uh, some holiday vacations try to sell. Well, we're actually doing the same here every single aspect we're going to take a look at. Um, some quick questions before you start. Do you trade breakouts yourself? And if so, what methods do you use? So we'll just, we'll give them a few, a minute, right? To them to, uh, yeah, we need to answer. see some answers. Uh, to be honest, uh, Chris, uh, lately, maybe last uh, two months, I I traded almost exclusively breakouts, especially those breakout pullback continuation moves, and those tend to be really profitable. Maybe maybe if even above seventy percent of success for taking one uh, BPC pattern, as I call it, and uh, maybe when markets are very choppy uh, last uh, few months. And I think maybe that this is this has been the best strategy to trade uh, markets like this, yeah. because we don't have a trend. We have uh, one day we have uptrend, second another day we have downtrend. So we really need to concentrate on trading those patterns. Absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Especially on the majors, they were uh, you know, inching forward. I did notice like the the pound or the the British pound, Australian dollar had a had a pretty nice, some nice trends there. But even then, you know, it's good to have breakouts at, uh, in your baggage. We have a few answers here. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, uh, with a lot of exclamation marks. That's great. Um, someone trading fractal breakouts, and someone saying, "I rarely trade breakouts, but usually get in on a retest." Cool. Yeah, the, the guy, a guy who trades uh, fractal breakouts. Uh, well, those kind of trading uh, uh, that, that that can be really useful because uh, Will Williams uh, made uh, in his in his chaos trading some uh, good examples on how to trade breakouts on fractals. But th that would be maybe someday we will have a completely whole webinar just for Will Williams uh, trading fractals. Uh, today we will show you how to trade, uh, I will show you how to trade uh, without fractals. Maybe Chris has something special, but I don't use fractals on uh, patterns. 
but I know that trading fractal breakouts can be really, really profitable. As I know many guys who use Bill Williams, Alligator, and uh, and uh, the that indicator, uh, awesome oscillator, to spot divergences and waves, Elliott waves. So that that can be real profitable. Absolutely, indeed. Uh, you know, fractals. If you, if you know when and where to trade them, it, it's it's just a, an interesting. Uh, support there for me. I use it more as a, a visual, where you know easily spot highs and lows, and it's occasionally do do trade the breakouts as well. Indeed, um, oh, wow. Bill Williams yeah. is a daughter for for fractals. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Alrighty. Okay, guys. Now let's see. This is the start. A small introduction to breakouts. So basically, what are breakouts? Uh, <clears throat> breakout is classified as what occurs when prices exceed previously determined support or resistance levels. Long positions are triggered when price move above resistance, while short positions are signal when prices drop below a clearly defined level of support. What does it mean? That means that uh, many traders and even professional ones use a range to determine uh, stop losses and uh, trading range basically so they mm -hmm, so they <clears throat> put their stop losses above resistance or if they are long they put it below support we exploit those breakouts by a longing into resistance or shorting into support and that is completely different uh, thing from trend trend uh, trades because Usually, when we are taking trend trades, we need the retracement. So what we do is we open a trade into retracement, and then we go by trend. But now, last maybe well, last two months, uh, especially on Euro USD, uh, price action has been really choppy. And what I what I was doing, what I've been doing, is basically determining the range. And then I wait for pattern to show, and then trade breakouts. And this is really this has been maybe the most profitable, even better than trend trading. Because one day we have uptrend, another day we have we have downtrend. We we cannot concentrate on even on higher time frames. And then when situation is a bit choppy, we can really use these breakouts as a profitable trading strategies. So breakouts on longer time frames create more significant significant changes but breakouts on shorter time frames have more impact on day trading so what i what i will show you and i'm sure chris will show you is how to trade intraday uh, uh, on breakouts because intraday trading is well it's it's a little bit trickier you know you need to spot uh, stop losses you need to spot entry position and you need to know where to to uh, take profits and uh, what I was doing is to trade breakouts on one minute and five minute time frame, uh, except for London Open where I use 15 minutes time frame. And I don't recommend trading breakouts on larger time frames. You, we can use it on spotting patterns, but then when we spot pattern, we need to zoom into a shorter time frame and trade it. We will show you how to do that. But especially if you trade breakouts, first determine the range, or if you have a pattern on on a, a bigger, higher time frame, and then you zoom into a trigger chart, for example, five minutes or 15 minutes time frame, and then you can trade that breakout pullback continuation, or you can trade as a trigger happy trader. I will I will tell you what as what that means. So. There are a few good strategies how to trade breakouts. Right, Chris? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, you were... Yeah, yeah absolutely. That is. No, that definitely. I use also, uh, I myself use, for intraday trading, five minutes indeed. And, uh, but I also have a strategy that's actually based on uh, one hour. But that is more of a trade where you would have to most likely keep a position, sometimes overnight, for example. Uh, it could be required. It's tricky, tricky thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I do have one on the one hour. But for intraday, I use five as well. Yeah, five minutes is excellent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see. That was 
this was the well, with our breakouts I had here a definition of my own basically I was saying <clears throat> you know the, the market has a kind of a heartbeat or a rhythm right that that it, that it bounces or it, it pounds uh, just like our heart goes in the rhythm and and the rhythm of the market is basically uh, some say also waves you know up down up down but you can also look at it as <clears throat> impulse correction impulse correction impulse correction so that kind of rhythm I apologize if my voice is uh, is is a bit cracking uh, I've had it the whole week so bear with me on that one um, so basically when we have a correction uh, and and we see the price is breaking out that is of course uh, the breakout right uh, and hopefully we will get a impulse after that correction and then we caught a great moment because that's when price starts to move fast in one direction normally you reach or take profit quickly um, and that's the best trading you don't want to have a trade that's stuck in sideways mess for very long uh, you know your, your, your capital is stuck basically in that trade so the best is to, to catch a quick impulse and when you get a quick impulse when the correction is over how do you know when the correction is over when the breakout occurs okay so <laughs> breakouts there therefore are very uh, cool trading today I forgot to tell Tadam Club before we started actually I took also a dollar Swiss uh, long and it was over in 14 minutes it's a great trade you know 40 pips in the pocket perfect so, excellent, excellent. Yeah. I, I did only Euro USD that uh, I showed it on on uh, Spiders Den, also on Admiral Marcus Facebook and Admiral Marcus blog. Breakout pullback continuation at thirty one thirty one. Ah, cool. We have had a good retest, and we went down well fifty pips, I think. Well, yeah. I, I closed it for twenty, but it's okay. Yeah, cool. Very nice. Mm. So you see, the, thank you. The, there was a, a, a nice breakout on the euro to the downside, on the, on the Swiss to the upside. Uh, logically, normally they are uh, moving that way. So a breakout occurs, you know, you have the consolidation of trading range or you, you break out of support and resistance levels. That kind of uh, corrections you can think of. Uh, here I just give an example of, uh, this is a quite high time frame, but of uh, even here you can see that as a guideline, as Tadantala was saying, it's useful even to see where uh, price is headed to on the longer term because when they break out of these trend lines uh, most of the time they do give a significant uh, you know, impact to the market here you see continuation upside continuation upside some deeper retrace some deeper retrace etc sometimes we don't get a break but a bounce so here you have an example of um, <clears throat> some breakouts maybe not necessarily to trade but uh, as a good indication of uh, what the market could be doing. Alrighty, why is it good to trade breakouts? Yeah, why is it good to trade breakouts? Well, breakouts are basically basically traded as a huge momentum spikes. As you already know from our webinars and maybe before that, uh, you already know that Forex is not centralized market. So Forex market does not have a, a classic volume. It's based on tick so it's not a classic volume as for example stock markets and other centralized markets and what we do is we need to catch the momentum we need to to stock it you know we need to stock it we need to we need to follow the price and when there is a huge momentum spike it usually leads to very fast profits and uh, breakout trades really tend to be the fastest way of making profits I know that from my uh, personal experience, as I traded, for example, three years ago, I traded Frankie fakes. Uh, those are fake moves that happened just prior to London Open. Uh, today, I don't trade Frankie, but I usually trade London Open or New York Open as a breakout uh, trade. So that London breakout is a typical example. Orders have been accumulated in Asia session. So we usually base our trades in early London and on London Open, because traders and the big big players tend to accumulate those. There are four market cycles. You, I won't get into that now. I will just tell you that accumulation phase starts in, in Asia and distribution usually starts in London Open. So we usually what we do is wait between uh, seven GMT and uh, eight GMT and exploit the first breakout that is 
really important. We need to exploit first breakout because usually the first breakout we can get a good number of pips, pips anywhere between 10 and 25. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, if there is no trend, there are still levels, so we still can trade. So I know many traders would tell me now, trend is your friend. I can agree with that. Trend is really our, our friend. But what is if our friend goes to holiday and we haven't seen him in a while? For example, the Euro USD. There is no trend. Now there is no healthy trend on one hour time frame. There is there is no healthy trend on on, on weekly on, on on four hour time frame. So we need to watch the levels. And what I usually do is when I do my analysis early in the morning, I post those levels with channels and with probable uh, patterns such as triangle pattern, rectangle, or something like that. So if there is no trend, we still have levels, so we still can trade. If we don't have a trend, we trade breakouts. We buy into resistance. This is crucial. We buy when resistance is broken. One or two pips above resistance, we buy it. And we sell into support. Three or four, five, six, seven years ago, it, 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 uh, maybe this, what I'm telling you now, is, uh, was, was really a sin to too long into support or to sell into resistance or to sell into support, sorry, or too long into resistance. But today we need to do that. Some things have changed. And believe me, this can be really, really profitable. Why? Because breakouts do stop grabbing. What is stop grabbing? Stop grabbing is someone called that stop hunt. But that, that isn't stop hunt. Why? Because when you have a range and even on five minute time frame, you have five minute range. And when that rate range has been broken, the momentum drives it in the in the momentum spike direction. So if we are taking for example long trade, when five minute resistance is broken, there is momentum because there are many stops for short traders. And those stops tend to move the price in breakout direction. So we can really make uh, a really, really fast profits. And that is what I basically do when I have a breakout trade. I use that to drive my price and later maybe I can scale in if price continues to make waves in our in, in the first first wave of breakout. So there, that's another story. There are five basically waves, third and the five waves, third and five, the fifth wave is the most important, fourth wave is correctional wave and so on. But that first wave which which pu uh, pushes the price above resistance, we long into resistance and we go long just few pips above and then we close it for 10 or 25 pips. It depends on huge momentum spike. And that is all uh, because of stop grabbing. Some stops are being grabbed and that is good for us because spike is going in our direction. So I think you understand now why breakouts are so fast and so explosive. Exactly. All the stop hunting that has been completed, right? Uh, well, I, I call it stop grabbing or, because or. there are manipulations, but basically there are some stop grabber patterns uh, which yeah. I, I can recognize and I call it stop grabbing. It's more like stop hunt. Maybe it's not a good word, stop hunt, because people will displace it for, you know, some sort of manipulation <laughs> of a broker. That is not correct. <clears throat> Brokers cannot manipulate the price. Really, it's it's big it's big banks, big players. Maybe FXCM or Rwanda or such brokers with such big liquidity. But I would never trade with it. I traded once, and uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Makes sense. That's a better word, indeed. Let's use yeah. that. No one. <laughs> ah. Alrighty. Um, well, the first goal of, of a breakout, uh, so you know, we want to see logically establish where prices have ended, uh, the correction 
uh, corrective action, I should say. So we have a, uh, for example, we have an impulse, and we get a consolidation, what kind of pattern, and here we're getting a breakout, for example, uh, and then this is this is the moment where this correction is over, and we're catching this impulse. So that's that's goal number one. Um, now the false breakout uh, occurs when we expect a breakout to happen, but in fact maybe we get a small breakout and then a close in reverse more or less. Sometimes that happens if you see a bear flag with an impulse and you, you see a drop and then all of a sudden move up. That happens sometimes. So with, I have some tips as well later on for that. Uh, the second goal is then, uh, of course, to, to, to capitalize on that trade. Uh, and Taranto has some great examples later on uh, on breakout okay. trades. Um, I usually go for a structural higher low, but sometimes a FIB target as well. So we both have a definition of or types of breakouts. I'll just mention mine first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I call them kind of like continuation breakouts. So these are breakouts with uh, the trend direction. So that was actually the example I was giving with my cursor actually where we, where we have an impulse, then we see a correction, and the impulse, the next impulse is the same direction as the first impulse. So that's a continuation breakout. All right, makes sense. Breakout with the trend direction most of the time. Then we have a reversal breakout that happens sometimes if you're making an impulse or you're in a trend like this. You make an impulse, uh, let's say prices like this, you make an impulse, and you see this consolidation, but you actually go the opposite direction. All right? And then you have these false breakouts or a fake out, and the breakout doesn't materialize actually um, in the direction of the trend. Or it, it actually goes for a while, but then reverses. Um, already, <clears throat> so here's a chart. Maybe that works the best instead of me drawing uh, channel or lines on the on a uh, on a slide. Uh, here you can see what I'm talking about regarding a impulse sideways box, and then the continuation sideways box continuation, uh, and then here you have a huge sideways zone as well. But actually, the, the currency not able to break these tops, then doesn't find enough buyers. You see some selling pressure come in. These bottoms gets broke, get broken, and we have a reversal uh, breakout, actually. Trend still continues. Then we have the same sideways box, approximately equal size as this one here. Uh, this one is sustainable, and we, we get a breakout. This is the euro dollar, not so recently ago in January of this year. And then we get again some smaller boxes and continuations, continuation breakouts. All right. Um, here's a reversal breakout. Again, down move, down move, down move. Sideways, not a continuation, but actually an opposite. Um, this is for our chart, so maybe not all of you would trade it, but at least if you see something like this, for example, uh, then you know that uh, in the longer term time frames. We're in a huge uptrend. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at a false breakout. Actually, same example here. If you would have, for example, used this trend line here, uh, you can see that this could have been a, a breakout or considered a breakout. Now, if you traded the smaller time frame, you would have gotten here probably anyhow 50 pips. Um, if you use this time frame, it's, it's more like a false breakout because of the fact that it just closes and reverses right straight down. And here again, so we don't really get a sustainable break above these tops, all right? But on a smaller time frame, by the way, uh, plenty of pips there to that upside. <clears throat> Same for this example here uh, on the right. Well, <clears throat> Chris, Chris told you what are uh, types of breakout trades, so I will tell you what I use for breakout trades. And basically, for me, there are only mm, well, two basic uh, breakouts is the breakout pullback continuation trades and trend breakouts. Also, there are trigger happy trades, and those are trades that we uh, we we immediately short along after the breakout or at the break of last fractal swing low high or important uh, support resistance level that is trigger happy. We don't wait for a retest. We just click our our button for example market order or we use pending market order 
and it go immediately in desired direction. If market order is used without waiting for a retest, then we call it trigger happy, trigger happy breakout. So what we do is again we mark the range, and when we first notice that the price uh, after it immediately after it breaks, for example, for short trades, it supports after it breaks, we immediately push the button for sell, we don't wait anything for a retest or something and then we call it trigger happy trades. Those trades tend to be the fastest and really, really can be real profitable. But a real problem is with those trade kind of trades is that the price can immediately reverse in the, in the other direction, so we need to accept the loss. Uh, how we filter that? We filter that by doing that trades on one M O on one minute or five minute time frame. I don't use 15 minutes for trigger happy trades. I use only one minute, exclusively one in five minutes. If levels uh, on one minute time frame and uh, five minute time frame are the same, then is a very uh, a very big chance for uh, my trade to go into profit and usually I take between 10 to 25 pips. Well, not not always, but usually. Sometimes I take less than less than 10 pips if if I spot that that will be maybe uh, a breakout uh, close to a big support or a big resistance. So I, I know that it will make at least at least 5 pips. It usually does. So we need to be very fast on, on our reflexes and we need to watch the price carefully and I'm telling you again only on one minute and five minute time. Those are trigger happy trades. Uh, another thing is called, well my favorite, uh, breakout pullback continuation or BPC pattern. Uh, those are tend to be safer and are traded by pattern breakouts. So we need to spot a pattern first, for example, rectangle, flat top, triangle, descending, uh, flat bottom, triangle, uh, bearish, wedge, bullish, flag, pennant, or something like that. I, I think that you already know what patterns are and breakout, pullback, continuation trades are exclusively traded by patterns. So we don't use any, well, particular how can I say fib levels or uh, or pivot points? We need to spot the pattern, and we when we spot it, we wait for breakout, pullback, continuation move. I will show you real chart examples on breakout, pullback, continuation. You probably are familiar with some of them because I post it on Facebook or uh, Spiders then or my Admiral Marcus blog. So you will see later. Uh, and uh, second thing is called a trend breakouts. Trend breakouts are a sort of uh, zigzag breakouts, uh, and those are traded exclusively when there is a trend. As you already know, we need to establish a trend on higher time frame. Then we zoom into a trigger chart, for example, five minute time frame, and then we exploit breakouts as zigzags. I will show you later. The main problem with trend breakouts is if we don't spot the very first breakout in the in the direction of the trend, we will have uh, big problems with managing our trade because second or third or even fourth wave can lead to a correction and we need to be prepared to have a bigger stop bigger stop than initial stop for first first initial breakout but if you if you know how to do it that can be manageable but you need you, first of all you need to see the trend you need to know what trend is what downtrend is what uptrend is and when you spot a trend you will know how to trade breakout i will show you that later first of all just concentrate on those uh, well, those basic two things, breakout pullback continuation, which is the most important on breakout trading, and later on trend breakouts. A trigger happy trades are basically just how you trade it. it there, there is no specific pattern for trigger happy trades. 
It's just that you exploit the very first break of support of re or resistance, and you immediately, after one or two pips of initial breakout, you immediately enter the market. You don't wait for anything. You just go with the flow. So uh, those are trigger happy trades. Yes, Chris. Just a quick question here from uh, two questions actually. One from Jay uh, that asks uh, if you were mentioning a five pip target. What are your stops like? He's asking if it's you know to make it worth a trade. Yeah, uh, Jay, I am. That's probably my friend from Forex Factory. Well, Jay, uh, if I use five pip target, what I do is I usually trade on one minute time frame. So uh, for one minute time frame, my stop shouldn't <coughs> be any anywhere, anywhere above ten pips. So that's basically what I don't do. But if I notice, for example, uh, today we had a breakout pullback continuation, but let's say that we made a trigger happy trade. For example, 3140 was really a good level. And we, we know that 3131 is the biggest level. And we entered on 3137. Ah, we, uh, by analyzing market and analyzing price action or using fractals or whatever, we were 70% sure that price will drop from 37 at least to 32 or 33 or 32. And we, we then we entered the market. And we needed to put our stops at least, well, the, at maximum 10 pips. So it would be 47. Those kind of trades are riskier, but somehow there is a really good chance to be in profit. If you spot that levels has been broken and the price is still, you know, ticks one minute time frame, it's still trying, trying to break it. We can do that. But if you if you trade on one minute time frame, you need to have maximum 10 pip stop loss. Don't go about it. If you use one minute and five minutes simultaneously, you watch five minute levels, not one minute level, then you can have a bigger, a bigger uh, stop loss, but also bigger target. For your question, answer is if I use five pip target, for example, I will put my stop loss at ten pips. But okay, great. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Uh, just, just one more thing. And yeah. I'm not talking about breakout pullback continuation. I'm, I'm. I told you now. What I was telling you is exclusively a trigger happy trade. Uh, I spotted I spotted a break of the last big low, and that break really, really was one or two pips below that level. And then I enter the market. That's trigger happy. That, that's not breakout. For breakout pullback continuation, targets are much bigger, and uh, also stops are, are uh, bigger. Gotcha. I understand. That, that's, yeah. that was, by the way, indeed, Jay, the one you mentioned. He, he <laughs> confirmed that. <laughs> um, Rick is actually asking if we have breakout trades uh, on five minutes. Yes, indeed, but uh, Tedontel also mentioned 15 minutes or one. I even mentioned uh, one hour, so <clears throat> it does depend what kind of uh, trader you are. Uh, I'm sure, sure you do. Don't worry. Sure. Yeah. Stick to uh, breakout pullback continuation for starters, and you will be completely okay. Believe me, we will show you that later. So it depends if you're maybe even a, a big, you know, big day trader that uses weekend, week and month charts. You might even take a trade on the day chart. But <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. I don't have you know the heart for that. <laughs> I really tend to exploit those intraday moves. I like it the most. Yeah. Yeah. Understand, um, Rick. We'll go into the those questions a bit later. So, hang on uh, for that. Let's see. Yes, indeed, Jay. That's correct. And Lazar is asking some questions. Let's see. Mm -hmm. oh, Lazar, I know you also. Mm -hmm. What uh, What if uh, the price is ranging a couple of minutes? And uh, do you, Do you use a time stop? Basically, is the question. Uh, <coughs> at the, the PPC. 
Not BPC, no, no, on short time frames, I don't use BPC. I use BPC, well, the best thing is to use it on one hour time frame or 15 minute time frame or four hour time frame. So anywhere from 15 to four hour time frame for day trading. Uh, but uh, if I trade one minute time frame, well, you know, <laughs> that's a tricky, tricky thing because time, I don't use time stop, no, no. I just, uh, I need to spot uh, level, uh, I need to spot uh, trend on five minutes and or fifteen minutes time frame for trading one minute. So if the trend on five minutes is exactly the same as the trend on fifteen minutes, I switch to one minute and I use it exclusively as a trigger chart. I'm not interested in trend on one minute. It's a trigger chart. Setup charts are five minutes and fifteen minutes and they need to go in the very same direction. I will tell you one thing today. Before breakout pullback continuation on Euro dollar today, I did that five pin trade. Uh, <clears throat> I shorted around 37, 38, and I closed it. I closed it at thir maybe it was thir around 32 or 31. It was you know six, seven pip trade. And why I did that? Because it was so clear to me after four years of experience. It's, you know, every day of screening time and so on and so on. I spotted the trend on five minutes was exactly the same as the trend on 50 minute time frame. And then when I when I noticed that 3140 has been broken, I did a trade on one minute time frame. You, s you know, when there are a lot of rejections from important level 3140, there are a lot of rejections on one minute time frame. And the trend is, is down on five and fi uh, 15 minutes. Well, the first reject, the first break of that 3140 is my trigger happy trade, and well, I did that. Maybe it was very good or great, a risk to reward, but well, you know, we need to exploit those explosive moments, and when we exploit those explosive moments, we need fast money, and it's okay. Sometimes that yeah. will be enough for today. <clears throat> I agree. It's uh, five minutes. I don't look for a pullback either. It's the, no, no. the one-hour strategy that uses that uh, actually that tactic for for a pullback and continuation to to a fib. But five minutes, absolutely looking for that explosion uh, continuation, definitely. Yeah. So when we usually trade breakouts, well, you know, I was telling you about a Frankie fake, Frank for fake because Frankie. Frankfurt usually drives the price in the uh, opposite direction of, of London. They prepare London for opening prices. Uh, that tends to be some sort of uh, early distribution uh, of Asia accumulation. So what I do is when I trade breakouts, I tend to exploit London open at 8 a.m. GMT uh, and uh, then if I'm good with London Open, I think that I can do a trend trades because if I leave my position running on London Open, if there is a huge momentum spike, I can scale in. I can add to my winning position, and then London and then London Open breakout turns into a classic trend trade. I will show you that later. Then, when to trade breakouts when there is no trend. When there is no trend, when the price is range bound, for example, on <coughs> sorry, 15 minutes time frame, or maybe on one hour time frame, we cannot trade one hour time frame where there is no trend. Why? Because if you, for example, we have a range price action, and somehow we entered on fib retracement, uh, for example, we had on 61.8 a long trade we would uh, probably be stopped out very soon because price will go five pips in our advantage then it will turn down and then we tend to do a revenge trades in contra direction and that is what I don't suggest never do that so when there is a range for example on last couple of weeks we have a megaphone pattern megaphone pattern on, on euro USD so we need to establish levels on 15 minutes, 5 minutes time frame and then we trade on lower time frames on 1 minute or M5. So 
and uh, 15 minute time frame is our setup chart. One minute and five minute is our trigger chart. And then we use that as a breakout. Usually, guys, those trades are trigger happy trades because it's not advisable to use breakout pullback continuation moves on lower time frames. And then price will eventually make a pattern or on one hour or four hour time frame. When we spot the pattern, we then we don't make any trigger happy trades. We wait for breakout pullback continuation with bigger target. So we don't take five pips on breakout pullback continuation. We try to exploit that for well sometimes it, it can be good for fifty pips. Also uh, what I trade uh, when I trade breakout is your coupon. It's uh, 1 p.m. GMT, and uh, usually uh, there there is news prior or just after a New York open. So what I do is if I'm already in the trade, I close the trade prior to news. Even if I'm in a small loss, I will I will close it because I don't know where spike will go, and then after it. Usually, 30 minutes after the news, price tend to go in in the desired technical direction. We had a jump today on euro dollar after the cable news, and the jump was excellent for some 10 or 15 pips. It was from 31.55 to 31.75, but that was a spike trading. That was the trading after the news. So we need to wait for the news, to, that spike, to fade. And then 30 minutes after, <clears throat> there is usually a beginning of a trend. So that is, for, for me, if, if, you, if you will listen to me, don't trade during the news. Just wait the, the, uh, the news to settle down a bit, then you can trade breakouts or other things. Sorry for this. <clears throat> Sorry for the green candles there. Uh, let's change that. Um, wait, wait, what time was the news? That was like. I think it was, it's, it was ten was ten uh, ten thirty on <clears throat> GMT plus one hour time. It's right. Ten thirty. It's uh, nine thirty GMT. I think nine thirty GMT. Oh, wait. Today is uh, 9th of May. So. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no it's this to the left, here. To the left side. This one here. Okay, okay. It's twelve o'clock. Uh, it's a nine. It was uh yeah. It was one one o'clock actually. My time. Our time was released right at uh, uh, Bank of England. Oh, or you mean the early? Oh, you mean the? Oh, you don't mean earlier. the interest? Earlier. Yeah, yeah. Ten thirty. Yeah, it's <clears> nine thirty GMT. I uh, I thought you earlier, meant the interest rate. Yes. Right? Uh, look at that spike. That spike yeah. was actually had an impact also on euro dollar and many traders who, who got into trade on euro dollar were you know were uh, were caught by a fake this yep. move was really fake because it was not that was a classical euro one right? yeah. that was classical was fake classical fake it was it was move caused by dollar weakness i told people before the london open be careful really be careful of downside only trade it if you have experience because and look at that. That's exactly what happened. It moved, it moved down, then took out all these stops uh, hiding behind this this fractal and, and this mm -hmm. resistance and boom. And then, indeed, went that way, but only probably after uh, some people uh, got taken out there. Absolutely. Let's go back yes. to that pound as we were saying, showing this this spike up indeed. Uh, to what I was talking about from around here, one fifty five sixty to the huge and that's of course a major resistance level on the one hour chart the four hour chart where we have all these stops here I couldn't break and came crashing uh, just a few hours ago yeah mm -hmm. alrighty so those are yeah we have now opportunities and dangers of breakout trading so the first thing is uh, what is the opportunity and a good opportunity for uh, for a breakout trading? As I already told you, it's a very fast way of making profits. Price has a huge momentum spike as it collects stops above or below support resistance level. 
I call it stop grabbing. So we usually collect other trader stops and we collect profits. One good breakout trade is enough for the day. 10 to 25 pips is good for a successful breakout trade. Then I don't usually, if I go for breakout pullback continuation, I can, no, it's always above 10 pips. So, but if you want to have a standard for breakout trading, because you don't know usually if you're, for example, novice trader, or you're, you don't have uh, much experience with breakout trading, 10 to 25 pips is good. If there is a trend, we always buy into resistance or sell into support. So we need to have that, that even on trend trades, what we do is buy into resistance or sell into support because there is, that's a breakout in trending conditions. I will show you that. That's not a breakout pullback continuation. That's zigzag breakout when we have a trend. But the thing is the same. We always buy into resistance or sell into support. If there is no trend, if there is a ranging market that can pose a, that can pose a real danger because we don't know where the price will go. And then we need to trade one minute and five minute breakouts with five to ten pips of profits maximum. Don't trade high, higher time frames as risk reward is poor. So if you have a big range on one hour time frame, so if you want to exploit breakout and for example your stop loss is 70 pips, don't trade it. Use 15 minute range or 5 minute range and trade it on one, on one minute or five minute time frame. Because you need to pay attention to risk reward. I know today is very hard to have, for example, one to two risk to reward. But if you do breakouts, that will cover because breakouts are the fastest way of making profits. The, really the fastest, the top of the tops in Forex market. False breakouts are common. And if we experience it, we need to immediately close the trade and then reverse it. For this kind of trading, you need to have a big, a huge experience. I occasionally, occasionally when I do uh, breakouts on five or one minute time frame, uh, I have those false breakouts. But uh, during my screening time, I recognize that it is a false breakout, so I immediately close the trade and then reverse it. So, for example, today it was a false breakout to 31.75. If I had had a trade, I would have closed it and then I would re reverse it because the price violently went to 31.50. So we need to know the momentum. You don't need any caterer to spot the momentum. You just need to sit Breakout trading is babysitting your trades. You need to watch it on your screen. You need to watch every candle. Is it, is it a rejection? Is it a spike? How price behaves at certain levels. So for breakout trades, you, that's not set and forget. You need to babysit your trade. Also, trigger happy trades make more profit but are a lot more dangerous. A retest trades, such as breakout pullback continuation, are safer but slower. You won't have such big, big, huge, huge, for example, potential profit on BPC, but you will be safer because you can, you can switch your BPC into a trend trade or you can wait, for example, the price to touch that certain level. Why? Because especially breakout pullback continuation moves are done on higher time frames. One hour, four hour time frame, even 15 minutes, but the best is and the most common is one hour time frame. Because most of trade <coughs> professional trade, uh, I call that TOTH, top of the hour, top of the hour. They open trades at the top of the hour. So those are opportunities and dangers of our breakout trading. Sounds great to me.
Well, to Absolutely. be honest, it sounds great to me. This last few weeks have been <coughs> really profitable with those kind of strategies. I hope that it will continue. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I actually, I, I told you about one of the breakout trades that I actually took on the euro on the one hour chart. Now you think you're talking about the, the one hour chart. Yeah. I took one, I took one yesterday actually. Where's that euro? Well, well, okay, you can show that uh, cable. Uh, I, I, can, I can tell a few uh, things about cable. I think it was five minute yeah. cable, right? Let me show you this one first, just quickly. Ah, okay, okay. So here's the euro dollar. I had this trend line. Um, very nice. Saw this breakout. Uh, I took the 618 fib, so it was threatening my stop loss, but we did get the bounce here. When I saw this, um, this this impulse, it was four o'clock, I think, by night, and this sideways move, I knew I already was, was this trade was good to go. And I actually added on a break of here uh, to that trade, and got got this trade here uh, yesterday. Uh, closed it at the minus 68 target. 9618 target because what I did was I just fib this move up um, and took 618 profit uh, minus 618 which was at <clears throat> let's take a look quickly 13170 area so that was a trade very recently yesterday let's take a look at the pound you said the pound dollar right you mentioned yeah pound dollar I think uh, it was a five minute <clears throat> time frame but okay let's imagine this is a for example high time frame you can uh, make a nice triangle uh, down there uh, Chris. Uh, no, uh, no, no, uh, uh, yeah, no, no, down, down, no, right. You see triangle. Yeah, yeah, that's a triangle, guys. Yeah. And now, for example, let's imagine this is one hour time frame. Okay. Okay. What we what we can do is to wait for breakout, pullback, continuation move. So, for example, if this was one hour time frame, it would be good to see if the price breaks down. This is a consolidation pattern. This is not a, a possible trend because this that's not ascending. Uh, ascending flat top or descending flat bottom triangle. It's a classic consolidation where price has been consolidating into the vortex of the triangle. So when it breaks out, in, I don't know <coughs> which direction it will break out, but when it breaks, breaks out, you need to spot breakout, pullback, then continuation. So I will show you also that on, on my other examples, but this is a good real-time uh, real example to spot a good, good, for example, a possible good rejection. Um, maybe, let's see, I can just quickly show, because we have a question here, I'll just quickly, where is that euro dollar? Uh, Euro New Zealand, Euro CAD, where was it? I just added a second ago. I'm getting blind probably. <laughs> euro oh, dollar, yeah. Yeah. there it is. <laughs> Uh, how do you know the breakout? Well, that's that's something uh, you could either use fractals or horizontal uh, levels. You can also use trend lines like this, uh, or you can use like those those consolidation zones where you have price bouncing up between a range, and you know you can put lines on top of or on the bottom. This is a, a breakout of a trend line, uh, a pretty neat trend line, and we had a very impulsive uh, one-hour push uh, outside of that. So that that looked you know like a very cool breakout trade there on the one hour chart. That's my breakout strategy on the one hour chart actually. So uh, that would be an example, uh, Rick and Lazar for your questions there. Alrighty, um, <clears throat> let's continue. Uh, there are a few questions pending. Um, we'll take a look at those when, uh, just in a few minutes. Um, so what happens if we get price breaking through that trend line, we just show you an example of that uh, with the euro dollar yesterday. Actually, how do we know if it's going to be a, a breakout, which is fake or, or real, kind of in that sense? And there are two things. One point one is actually looking at convergence or, or divergence is always very useful. We had a webinar uh, on that a while, uh, maybe two weeks ago, I think, April the twenty fifth. We explained that if you have divergence, uh, that the price is not in sync with the oscillator, and if you have a breakout uh, in in the direction of the trend, you know those uh, might be a bit tricky because of the fact that you're already in an unsustainable pattern. So if you get a breakout, that breakout is probably going to be or has a chance it's not going to be sustainable as well. <clears throat> so. 
uh, that's very important to keep an eye on divergence and convergence. If it's convergence, uh, your breakout trade is going to be probably more likely. Uh, then we have also <clears throat> the intensity, the or momentum or volatility, uh, which we can try to measure and to see if the breakout has sufficient power uh, to break out in a sustainable manner and give us the picture we're looking for, or whatever the time frame we're using. So I have here uh, more examples about how to measure volatility and momentum because we already covered this convergence and divergence in that webinar. So um, let's going to focus on this volatility and momentum. Then we'll take a look at your questions. And uh, then uh, uh, Tarantula has some great uh, trade uh, setups as well. So make sure to, uh, to catch or to stay on for us with those. We're going to have a bit of overtime, but I'm sure you don't mind. Um, where you can get the recording from the April 25th, please ask. For those of you who want to watch that webinar of April 25th, please send the, go to the Admiral, Web, Admiral Markets website and send a, a quick email uh, to customer service and, and they'll let you know where you can find that and you can get all the information what we told you on that day. Okay? <clears throat> so the level of volatility and momentum. What I use, what I uh, always have on my chart is a, is a moving average and I look at the angle just to get an indication of what kind of strength uh, there is in, in, in the market. Uh, you know, that, that takes maybe a bit of practice it's not a, I don't use, it's not like a black and white indication that I use, it's more just like a feeling uh, or, or extra confirmation depending on the angle. For example, if it's a 45 degree angle, I use a, a short term moving average, mostly uh, 8 or 13. Uh, these two on purpose because their FIB numbers uh, are a good indication of, of, of a short term um, momentum. So the angle of it, if it's at the 45 degrees, it's kind of like an extra confirmation that the price is moving in a momentous, in a strong uh, manner. <clears throat> Many traders use Bollinger Bands as well. Me not, but I do, did mention it here because I know that many do and uh, actually are quite successful with scalping strategies using the Bollinger Bands. Uh, I know one personal trader uses that, so I definitely wanted to mention that. Um, price action very pure and simple and we'll have webinars on that actually next week so I want to make a small promotion there for that already regarding uh, candlesticks the next two the next two webinars actually so there are definitely some things that we can use for that uh, if you're using a one hour candle waiting for a close of the candle for example is prudent uh, in my opinion and even the 15 as Tonantola said uh, maybe I think I think he said, but uh, in any case, the one hour. Uh, and if you're looking at lower time frames, then not, of course. So um, that's one way of waiting for price action to confirm. For example, if you have a very bullish close near the high with no wick, uh, the candle clearly outside of the trend line or outside of the resistance line, pushing, you know, closing above it, that's a, a strength, a sign of strength, and there's no selling pressure in that hour. Now, if that becomes a huge wick, for example, uh, then the likelihood of that being a false breakout is, of course, drastically higher. All right? So that's the, um, the price action clue there. I already mentioned here, false breakout, close outside. And the bigger the candle, the, the better in a way <clears throat> because it just shows more power. Uh, the fourth point, the consolidation zone length, in a way, uh, there it's 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 the bit tricky, but if you get a a certain size and if it's a contracting wedge, for example, just looking at the timing of that zone, you can already have an idea when maybe the breakout will occur. Normally, according to the classical technical analysis, it should occur approximately two thirds of that wedge, for example. So that's an idea when you can get uh, a heads up when that consolidation pattern could end. For example, if you have like a a wedge like this, approximately like here, uh, it could break because eventually, otherwise it's getting really squeezed in uh, too much and it's going to break, of course, eventually. Uh, also, if, if you have a smaller, maybe if this is, for example, one hour chart and you have two one hour candles like this and you get maybe a few hours consolidation of three or four and then a continuation, 
that's also very uh, high likelihood. Now, if this turns out to be more than four or five uh, uh, candles, and you have already maybe six or seven, and this whole consolidation zone is going to probably turn out to be longer. All right, so those are consolidation zones that you can, or lengths that you can use to your advantage. This is a, a chart finally for you with the angle of the 5 EMA and 20 EMA uh, example. Uh, <clears throat> 21 would be actually more precise because that's also a fib number. And you can see that that's a good way of, of, of gauge, ga gauging or measuring, maybe is a better word, <clears throat> the angle of that trend. Now, that's just as a confirmation. If you have more experience in price action and uh, you have a very good grasp of that, you don't even need it. You can just look at this one hour candle and you can see clear. For example, if you would look for a breakout here, for example, if you connect these tops maybe like this, and you see a breakout above this level with a clear uh, high, uh, close near the high, good hour bar, for example, you know, then you already have the confidence to take that trade, for example. But it could give that extra confidence maybe if you uh, have a bit less experience or new to this, for example. Here's an example with the Bollinger Bands. And here you can see that when we get a breakout of these trend lines, this is a dollar yen one hour chart. Uh, during that massive uptrend, uh, we had since October actually, but this is uh, January, February. And you can see when the breakout occurred, uh, when we didn't actually touch the Bollinger Band this is not a strategy of mine. This is just observation, by the way, just before we get questions on that. Just, just uh, because I don't use the Bollinger Bands, but I just wanted to show you a chart. <clears throat> but I did notice when I made the screenshot is that when it broke out and it didn't hit the Bollinger Band here and here and here, those were actually sustainable up moves. But when it, when it hit the Bollinger Band here and here, uh, actually it seemed like it didn't have enough space for that upside. I don't know if that you know if that holds true. As I said, I don't use them, but I find it interesting. Um, chart patterns: a double, uh, triple tops. As I said, wedges, uh, flags, triangles. Those all could be used uh, to have an idea which direction the next impulse could go to, or which levels are key to monitor. Uh, and before anticip like in anticipation of that move, in some cases, you could even uh, you know be ready to to take a trade both ways, not necessarily having entry orders on both sides, but I meant like you know being prepared mentally to to react to both sides or both breakouts uh, if you deem that um, uh, reasonable in your analysis. But uh, in some cases, certain patterns give a statistical advantage to one side, right? Like if we have a bull flag, statistically they break more to the upside than to the downside. Doesn't mean it always happens, but there is a statistical advantage there. And uh, let's see there, I'm mentioning here, yeah, breakouts, well, be careful <clears throat> just in general when there's uh, news, news events. Uh, be aware of those news events, of course. Be aware of holidays when there's illiquidity in, in the market and maybe those breakouts are not uh, sustainable basically uh, and you have a higher chance of a uh, of a false breakout uh, that's the same as uh, to until I was saying the session times and um, yeah the Asian session giving a certain range in the market uh, and if you would trade the breakouts on the pound <clears throat> in the Asian session and you would trade a breakout strategy well that would be uh, not good for your equity curve um, that wouldn't work because there's just not that momentum and power to to give that sustainability um, to your tr to your strategy. And actually, you know, if you would maybe trade a range strategy in Asia, it would probably do a lot better. For example, so <clears throat> so not uh, yeah, that's something you have to check yourself, of course, as well. But you get my point. Not break out uh, pound dollar five minute in the Asian session, for example. So. Let's see, this is pound dollar for hour. Uh, I don't know why I use a lot of high time frames, but uh, sideways move, getting continuation here. Um, you can see downside. Sideways box here <clears throat> for about one and a half days. 
and you can see how basically the impulse happens in relatively fast movement. You know, it's as we know, there's more correction spent in more time is spent in correction than time spent in impulse mode, and this confirms that basically we have one candle here and a whole bunch of them going sideways. So normally we would expect to break to the downside that did happen, two candles down or three sideways, <clears throat> then another three candles down, sideways, two candles down, bigger sideways move, one candle down, and then we get a false breakout here and then continue, or not a false, but a reversal, but then still sellers coming in and pushing it for the last time down. This is a, so these are all consolidation zones actually, but you have to wait a long time before you get to continuation and uh, here as well, and then here's a bear flag continuation as well. This is one of those where we had divergences between the bottoms. So this is one of those examples where actually the consolidation happened at the moment when we had divergence. So this could already give us a, a warning that uh, maybe that could break to the other side, and that's what indeed happened. We didn't get that continuation break and we got the opposite. <clears throat> Let's see if I have a, no, that's it. Uh, Tonetta, before you start on, on this, let me just quickly, because we had a few questions here, uh, go through those. Um, let's see. Oh, the person, one person left already. Well, guys, you should, you should stay with us now. Now we will give you practical examples how to trade breakouts and what I use to trade breakouts. Huh? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, are there various types of patterns or recognizing breakouts? Let's see. I think we already answered that, right, Mohit? Basically, in the last part. So let me see if there are other questions. Yes, what time like frame do you prefer for BPC? Yes, from uh, one hour time frame, four hour time frame, or eventually 15 minute time frame. Uh, let's see. Can you, well actually Lazar, about support and resistance lines, we're going to have a separate webinar on that in the end of May, I think. No, yes, beginning, yes, of of May. beginning of June. Beginning of June. On May, June, June. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so more on that soon. Yeah. Exactly. And let's see, any, da, 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 Garrett already answered. Garrett, yeah, that I already answered. Uh, and one more, last one here, and then we can start here with your slides. I have done BBC on Aussie New Zealand on the 7th of May uh, at 121.58 after confirmation in 30 minutes. But, I, but still, I failed. I don't know where I've gone wrong. If your time permits, can you explain, please explain me the mistake. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we will. I will show you later uh, yeah. what kind of breakout pullback continuation patterns you should trade. There will be uh, many examples of that. You will see how it's done. But first of all, you need to know the patterns. If you don't know the patterns, you don't, uh, you cannot trade the breakout pullback continuation moves. So we need to, uh, first of all, you need to get familiar with patterns. But I, uh, Chris, have we ever done pattern webinar? No, uh, no, we haven't done it. Be, oh yeah, okay. <coughs> then they'll, then we will do it maybe in yeah. our next uh, set of webinars that we will show other traders what are pennants, flags. Uh, flat top, triangles, flat bottom, every sort of patterns. But let's say that most of you know what patterns are and you probably did some, at least few of them in your uh, trading lifetime. Uh, but before we do uh, that um, breakout pullback continuation, we will start with London breakout trading strategy. Okay. What is London breakout trading strategy? That is a strategy that uh, that uses a huge momentum spikes usually after the accumulation in Asia session, and those kind of moves tend to be uh, very volatile and uh, they work especially good on cable. So you need to have your uh, cable chart opened, a pound dollar, and what you should do is to open a 15-minute chart for a cable dollar. <coughs> For a pound, uh, sorry, for a sterling pound dollar, 
and then draw a vertical line at 4 GMT time on your chart. It's 4 GMT AM, of course. Again, draw a vertical. That's that's well known strategy, but I don't know if some of you maybe don't know that I use it when I trade London breakout, and I use it on the dollar on the <coughs> sterling pound dollar. So draw a vertical line at 6 GMT. So you have two lines at 4 GMT at 6 AM GMT. Then you need to draw a horizontal line at the high of the candle bars in between the vertical line. So that will be the top. The bottom line is that you need to draw it at the low of candle in between the vertical lines. And then what you should do is uh, you should add 89 EMA exponential moving average close to your chart. So your chart should look like this. Okay, uh, next slide, Chris. Okay, oh, that, uh, that's that's another slide, but that, this example for uh, it's it's okay. We can switch later on. You can go forward one okay. one slide <coughs> forward. Yep. Yeah, this is this is uh, for example for your buy, buy trade. But first of all, you need to have your setup chart. It's 15 minutes time frame, and you need to have four lines: two vertical, two horizontal lines. Those vertical lines are the time of your trading hours, trading hour setup. It's between 4 GMT and 6 GMT. So you mark the candles with vertical lines. Then you add horizontal lines at the top of the candles in between that time. So between 4 and 6 GMT, we mark the top. Exactly a few pips above. And then below that is the support. It is the bottom of this six to four to six GMT time. It's the bottom. So we have a slot box. And what we do is for buy trade, we need to enter at the first breakout because the price is above 89 EMA. So we will take only long trades. You see, this is a, from a, a 9th of May, yeah. I didn't trade this, but this this could have been a very, very good breakout trade. We enter here where are marked the candle, and we drive it to uh, the very first level <coughs> of resistance or anywhere between 10 to 25 pips. This was the very first level of big resistance because we had a historical double top. and you see how the price reacted to the level. It created a gap, so the momentum was very, very huge. Yeah, it was basically 21 pips. So anywhere between 10 and 25 pips is good thing. So after the initial spike, you entered, well, you need to enter either a market order or pending order. When the price, price is broken, the resistance we enter a, our our long trade and stop loss of course is below the last swing low this is very very important guys always use a swing low in the box if you go for a long trade and look at this <coughs> well basically this this uh, stop loss would have been at somewhere around 31 32 or eventually 30 if you go with 5 pips so it, it's only 14 pip stop loss. It's very good. And now you need to know we are we are not doing we don't do trend trading. This this is a typical breakout trade. So enter when resistance have broken have been broken. If we go for long trades, price needs to be above 89 EMA, and when it breaks. 4 to 6 a.m. resistance, we go long. 10 to 25 pips target price or at very, uh, uh, the very important pivot point or support resistance level. So that is a for long trade. We have a slide prior to this one for long trade, but we don't, maybe we don't need to show that because, yeah, that's the rules. Either 90A, 
<coughs> if the 89 EMA, the blue line is below the box, place a pending buy order, buy stop two pips above the top of the box, set your stop loss below the box and target the nearest pivot point or support resistance levels. When you are 20 pips in profit, close it or trail it. See example below. Yeah, this is very important. Price needs to break out <coughs> anywhere from 7 a.m. to 8 by GMT. Because this is this is the most important thing. We trade the first breakout. We don't trade the second, the third, or because maybe even if the first breakout is a false one, we need to trade it because the first breakout is usually usually profitable. And we are trading the first breakout. This is the crucial rule. So after the 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. support resistance level, that box, you need to exploit the very first breakout. So you need to get up early to trade this if you are living, of course, in Europe. So sell trade. If the 89 MA, the blue line, is sorry, this should be bill. Oh yeah, yeah, this is about the box because this is a sell trade. We need to place a pending sell order two pips below the top of the box, the bottom of the box. Set your stop loss above the box and target the nearest period point or support resistance level. The same rules apply, but reverse it for sell trades. The same. We need to place our stops above box last highest high. And we go for 20 pips of profit, we close it or trail it. My personal strategy is to close it. I don't trail. I don't scale out. For, tra for breakout trades, I close the trade. I always close the trade. Price, same thing. Price needs to break out anywhere from, eight, from 7 to 8. 05 GMT, only one trade, and we are trading the first breakout. <coughs> Chris, you can show us in the next slide. This is again, this is a very typical breakout trade on cable dollar. You see, 7th of May, look at this. We have the top of the box around 55 47. We have the bottom of the box at somewhere 55 39. So, this is 4 to 6 a.m. Asia range because. Usually, cable don't, doesn't do anything prior to 4 a.m. Really, it's very futile to trade it prior to that. Even I don't recommend, Chris said, I don't recommend to trade cable even, <clears throat> even in whole Asia. But we need to spot the levels because Asia is accumulation, is in accumulation phase and tends to prepare the market for a breakout. So, look Absolutely. at this. <laughs> look at this. We enter 55.36. Our stop loss, uh, stop loss is, uh, well, 15 points. And then look at this. <coughs> it, it goes down. It's 15 minutes time frame, so basically we would have waited for, I don't know, maybe two hours. Even if you waited for more, look at this. If you want to experiment, look at this. It went down. I look, it, 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 it went below that big, big support and it wasn't anywhere near to 89 EMA. So again, the breakout was very successful. For example, if we cannot, well, for a typical breakout trade, it would have been good for around 16 pips, very first breakout. But look at this later, it was really, for a patient traders, look, this was absolutely brilliant. But very first breakout would have yielded us approximately 16 to 20 pips again. Excellent. So that's a London breakout strategy. You we use it only for London and nothing else. Second thing is the most favorable thing and the most traded thing on the earth of forex trading. I think and I, I surely know that many, many, many professional hedge fund managers and bank traders, institutional traders, trade breakout, pullback continuation, or as someone call it, breakout retest continuation. So what are prerequisites? The first thing is, is that we need a pattern formation. So what are pattern formation? Those are flat top triangles, flat bottom triangle, ascending flat top triangle, descending flat bottom triangle, wedge flag rectangle, 
uh, it can be also uh, well it can be also I do not trade megaphon but for example we can we can trade a diamond but I don't recommend it so every pattern except well diamond and megaphon is tradable tradable so what we usually see is rectangle or a classic triangle or flat top or descending flat uh, bottom triangle we will see next examples on real charts of what I did so first again first we need to establish a pattern formation we need to draw the lines and then we wait for a breakout pullback then continuation BPC pattern is safer if we trade it as a continuation move and it's less safe if we trade it as happy trigger happy trade so the best thing is to wait for a retest then to enter enter a particular trade. I will show you how to do that on the next slide. Okay, Chris. Yeah, ah, prior to that slide, okay. Again, we need a breakout in the desired direction, then pull back to retest the level. Continuation starts after the last high or low is broken or immediately after a retest. We cling on to the trade longer than London breakout. And breakout pullback continuation trades are trades that can be spotted on every time frame. The higher time frame is the better. 15 minute, 1 hour, 4 hour are recommended time frames. We will, if you day trade or weekly trade, you can do it also on, on daily or weekly charts. I don't do that, but you can do it. We will spot breakout pullback continuation in every kind of the market, be it ranging or trending. But it's a typical that it happens after the consolidation. So it happens usually after a consolidation move because triangle patterns are basically consolidation patterns, rectangles also. Wedge and the flags are retracement patterns, but uh, typical for breakout public continuation pattern is that triangle, be it a flat top or, or, or bottom or a classical triangle, it's typical for triangle patterns. You will, you will see that on our next slide. I think that we can show some examples. Yeah, this is a real example of 15-minute cable trade. Okay, 6th of May again. Perfect example. Breakout, pullback, continuation. There is no indicator. You are the indicator itself. You are a trader, so you need you you need you need to know what patterns are. So look, this is exactly this is a rectangle rectangle pattern and it is tradable very tradable uh, for breakout pullback continuation when we have a downtrend we have downtrend because we have a series of lower highs and lower lows so we are in downtrend you already know from our uh, our webinars how to establish a downtrend when you have a series of lower highs and low lows that's a that's a typical downtrend so after this we have a nice consolidation because traders need to prepare for upcoming moves. Rectangle pattern is a consolidation pattern. It usually continues to go in the same direction of the trend. So we have downtrend, we presume that we, it will go down because rectangle goes with the trend. So we need to have a breakout. We had a breakout. I marked the level. Look at this breakout. Then after some breakout we had a pullback we need to wait for that pullback look at this to the pip pullback and continuation when we enter the the trade we enter the trade after the second candle after the pullback candle low has been broken so the entry should have been at the very second yeah there at the low of the candle no no the low of the wick here, the low of the week, yeah, we <coughs> enter because it was the pullback has already been done and when that week, week has been broken, we enter there. And look, look at how many, how many pips the trade is yelled. Because we place the, the, the stop loss just above the breakout. So just above that, that pullback candle, yeah, that's, that is the level for stop losses. That pullback candle is our level for stop loss and uh, after the after the second candle we enter the continuation move some traders trade that after the initial retest 
some traders trade after the initial retest has been bounced. So after the after the candle has retested that that, that this week, yeah, no, no, this week prior to this <coughs> scandal week, yeah, some traders don't wait for continuation. They immediately trade after the rejection of the price. What I suggest is wait for continuation because it tends to be more slower, but it is safer. When the break, when the breakout happens, continuation move, you can s safely enter the market. It won't be an early trade, but it will be a safer trade. That is a filter for false breakouts. So, we can move on to next slide. Yeah, this is very important. Next slide is classical triangle consolidation move. You see a triangle, you need to connect trend lines, and what I what you do is you basically well I could have maybe I could have connected uh, those trend line at the three three lower lows, but it's okay. This is used just for example I did it on Euro uh, yesterday. Because the, the biggest thing is I waited for that uh, for that uh, breakout of the of the highs. I really waited for that and it was a very, very good day yesterday. I really got a good profit. Uh, so what I did is I waited for breakout. Look at this first candle. It breaks out. Then look at second candle. It, it was a retest. And where I entered is I <coughs> switched to lower time frame, of course, and I waited at the first candle week because it was the continuation move. After this breakout candle price immediately tested the lows and then it it pummeled upward. So after the, the this B, after this B breakout, I, I entered the lower time frame, yes, the first candle. And that was <coughs> where I entered the market as a continuation move. So breakout, we have a week. Then the price is pulled back to retest. And then because this is four hour time frame, you need to switch lower time frame to see the break of this breakout week and that is where we enter as the continuation <coughs> this was also yes this was yesterday as well actually right yeah yesterday yes. yeah yeah cool look at this that was thing. nice that, that went all the way <laughs> to here huh? yeah very nice yeah and it went really really <coughs> up. okay this is a typical flat top ascending triangle what does it mean? Flat top ascending triangle, usually that ascending trail line gives us a cue where price wants to go. So in this typical um, trade of breakout pullback continuation, I knew that price, somehow it showed me that price tends to go up, but we need to, we need to wait for a breakout because this rising trend line, lower trend line is giving our, us the cues where the price will go. The flat top and ascending trend line is called flat top ascending triangle. The price first break out in the desired direction, you see. Then after after some three or four hours, we need to be patient, it pulls back to retest. You see, it pulls back to retest the level. Then after a small, small, small retrace down, it plummets up. Look at this. It plummets up. You, there's probably been a, some sort of a stop hunt down there. But you see, continuation work is done after <coughs> this highest high of the breakout and pullback. You see, breakout, there is a double top, and then after that, the price is pulled down to retest that flat top line. And we enter at the break of this C continuation. So we enter just here after the price has has retested. So we need to enter there after retest. You can practice in your charts. It's very easy, really. So first step: wait for breakout, then to pull back, and after that, we long at pull back candle, the highest high in this case. So it's a typical breakout pullback continuation move. You see how many pips it could have yelled? Because you don't trade the momentum, you trade pattern. This is not just the momentum. This is very, very good. This this is what professional traders do. Really, this is what professional traders do. Institutional traders. Well, 
me and Chris do it for sure. Next slide, Chris, please. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a typical rising wedge formation. Rising wedge is uh, bearish, bearish formation, so it can be also called as bearish wedge. You see what price been doing? Its uh, wedge is retracement pattern. It's not a consolidation, it's a retracement pattern. So, we spotted a wedge. Then we wait for breakout. You see, then perfect pullback, almost to the pip. You see pullback, I mark it with P. B is breakout, P is pullback, and then continuation. Continuation move after this pullback candle has been broken. We enter there. We had some retracement, but then the prices plummeted down. Look at this. This is more than 150 pips on one hour time frame. Again, breakout, pullback to test this lower wedge trend line and then continuation move. You need to be patient for these trades. <clears throat> Again, these are not momentum trades. These are pattern trades. You need to be patient. And yeah, that was a nice one. That was also, actually, that was Wednesday, wasn't it? This one. I think Very it nice. was, yeah. Again, on the table. <clears throat> yeah, this was a good one. This was impulse correction, impulse classic. Yeah. Uh, three move down. Here was a 382 of the entire move up. We bounced there. And I took actually a long yesterday um, when we broke above this candle. And I, I got some pips here um, on a smaller time frame, on a five minute. Or which one was it? No, this one. Yeah, this one here we broke. Out of this trend line, oh, that well, was, this one was a very nice, nice trade there. Yeah, but for for breakout pullback continuation, <coughs> it was really, really good. Yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, this, uh, this example again, again, it's a, it's it's called flat bond, uh, flat bottom descending triangle because we have descending trend line, and we have we we I could have connected this also this candle to have a perfect double uh, bottom. But it, it, it's good because this is a typical for, for flat bottoms. We can have a week which is lower, but basically the price has been closed into, into the triangle itself. So this is called a flat bottom descending triangle. After the price has broken this lower, this lower part of the triangle, it retested. It, it was almost a perfect retest and then it dropped down. We enter at the break of this pullback. So again, breakout, pullback, continuation move just below this week. Yeah. And again, it was very, very good trade. So for trend breakouts, so you now you know what breakout, pullback, continuation pattern is. You should always follow us on Admiral Markets uh, Facebook because I post there also, also Spiders Den, also Admiral Markets blog. And I post very often uh, how those setups for breakout pullback continuation moves. Also, I posted live live trade on uh, for Spiders Den today on breakout pullback continuation 31 31. So that is really the most profitable breakout trades you could ever have. Uh, what are trend breakouts? Uh, trend breakouts are typical zigzag breakouts in the direction of the trend. Uh, characteristic is that it doesn't have a very good risk to reward ratio. I will show you why. We don't trade it on higher time frames than five minute time frame. Set up chart again. We need to establish trend on one hour time frame. After that, we need to switch into lower time frame, five minute time frame to spot zigzag. So we can we can trade it. I need to say it's not easy manageable. You need to have advanced knowledge of stop loss levels, hourly pivot points, also hourly pivot points. Sorry very very important it's a zigzag pattern that should be only traded by a classic buy sell into retracement so what I what I tell if you're an wise trader go with typical trend trades don't do trend breakouts these are ten these tend to be for advanced traders I will show you why it can be profitable but it needs a good knowledge on the levels and scaling in works best, but good analysis of higher time frame is needed. You can scale in, but you need to know the trend on higher time frame, one hour time frame for five minutes trading breakouts. You can show us next slide, uh, Chris. This is, yeah, this, these are, okay. First of all, 
we can see that price has made a lower low, then it made a lower high. So basically, on one hour time frame, it means that we are in downtrend. Then we switched for uh, on a five minute time frame. What we do is wait for the first swing. We always wait for the sw first swing to occur. Then we mark the levels. With red, with red is the bottom. With black is the top. After the first swing, we mark the levels. Then we wait it. We need to sell because the, there is a downtrend. We wait this the price to spike up. Then you see we sell it at the break of this red line. <clears throat> That's our first trend breakout trade. The stop loss is uh, well, it's around 30 pips. It's around 30 pips on this trade because we placed our stop loss on last highest high there. But when we enter, once we enter the market. We need to drive it to a next level of support. Then we have two options. Either we close the trade or we wait and possibly scale into a second wave of a trend. If we close it, we would get, for example, some 20 pips there. Yeah. But if we, if we want to scale in, we wait for another breakout. We need to be patient. We need to wait for that pullback, and then we enter another sell trade. And then again, price pulls back. It's a typical wave formation, but it goes lower. So we could have entered even a third sell here. After the price pulls back, we enter a sell. We can do that by trailing stops or by manually moving stop loss above last high high. But we need strong trend. We don't do when uh, this when there is a ranging market, and for novice traders, I don't recommend it. I personally do it from time to time, but it's I like to to enter our first or second second wave. I don't like to trade later on five minute time frame because price usually what it does it tends to have a bigger retracement, but this is when we have a good trend and when we spot a good zigzag we can trade this selling into supports. So this is how we trade trend breakouts. But this again is an example. You need to demo trade it first before you go live. Uh, the most important thing is concentrate first on breakout pullback continuation moves. Those are the most traded and the most successful patterns in Forex market. If you master it, you will be you will probably <coughs> become a master of breakout trades. So guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us. We actually have uh, a few already. Uh, let's quickly take a look at them. Let's see. The live charts is going to be a bit difficult because I'm running out of time. To be honest, I have some uh, some meetings still. So let's see. Why the 89 EMA? Uh, Rick is asking. <clears throat> Why the 89 EMA? Because the cable respect it. It has a historical historical liking of that 89 EMA, and it tends to be a fib number, very close to fib number. So it's yeah. 88, you know, 88.6. It's <clears throat> basically 89 rounded. So it's a fib number, and the cable likes it. Same numbers are always good. Yeah, uh, always. Even on moving averages, yeah. Some of these questions are going to be a bit difficult. Reward to risk we'll talk about once in the risk management course. Um, take profits. How, what once Lazar is asking, but if the volatility is going lower, how can you yeah, put sure. then take profits? Close the trade. If volatility is going lower and you have a breakout trade, close the trade. Because breakout trades need to have they need to have a big volatility. So close the trade immediately after you notice that volatility is fading. Uh, Sashi is asking uh, me what other confidence signals info can we look at to confirm breakouts? Basically, indeed, uh, you know, like like a continuation breakout, as Nana, uh, as uh, said, makes a lot of sense as well. And you get that extra uh, confirmation that you're not in a false breakout or if you're uh, a little bit more uncomfortable with smaller time frames, maybe an hour, waiting for a clear one hour uh, close, you know, that that's normally doesn't turn out into uh, 
a huge reversal or a false one. Um, really, otherwise, divergence, there's really not much to add than what I've already no, really looked at, actually. <clears throat> Patterns, just, important. And yeah, just a quick add on. You just wait for that. Uh, when, you, when you trade breakout pullback continuation, you don't need any indicator. You don't need to have confluence of anything. You just need to uh, try to demo it, try to master, flip the charts, uh, try to chart it. There is no indicator for that. Uh, try to spot a pattern, then try to see breakout pullback continuation because it really tends to uh, price to respect that. If you have breakout and then retest, and after that, if that retest is has been broken out, then you go into a trade. It's a very simple, and it it just requires a basic or maybe intermediate knowledge of of forex market. But continuation move is enough for you <coughs> to enter the market. Uh, then we have one more last question, uh, or yeah, last last questions, <coughs> because otherwise I really have to get going. Um, Let's see. Yes, Stefan, indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can confirm with Nenet. Um, do you, I look definitely at one or four hour charts to get a an understanding of the currency, and then we go. Then you go to the five minute chart as well. Yes. After you. Oh, okay. First of all, after you spot the pattern, pattern can be <coughs> spotted on fifteen minutes, on one hour, or four hour time frame. Use that knowledge. Then, after you spot the pattern, you need to zoom in. If you're trading for a 15 minutes time frame, then well, maybe you don't need to. You don't basically you don't need you because 15 minutes is lower time frame. But if you trade one hour time frame, you can you can just mark the level, mark the breakout, mark the pullback, and if you if you go for example with long trade, mark the high of that pullback, and then switch to a five or fifteen minutes time frame and okay five minutes is enough and when the price has broken that pull back high you go with continuation move it's not that it's not that hard I shown you on this webinar it's, yeah. it's very simple you wait for breakout then that is the highest point then pull back just immediately after after the high has been has been made and then after the price breaks that level of breakout pullback, you you go in desired direction. Absolutely. Um, let's see. I know that most of you want to trade breakouts with the uh, with the indicator strategy. That you, you don't do that. We and we I don't recommend to do that. I never recommend doing breakout trades with with trading with trading with indicators. You need you need to know breakout pullback continuation. It's it's enough for you, believe me. It will be enough for your account. Yeah, yeah. Only thing is that that could be good. Sometimes I use a fib at least, but yeah, you use fibs too. Yeah, <coughs> it depends. Too. Depends if if you use the smaller ones, you don't even need it. But maybe on our chart, I like to aim for targets. Yeah, but that. traders try <coughs> to find a magical indicator for breakouts. True, there is no magical. True. Yeah. Absolutely. You, just, that's, you don't need to do that. You no, know, that's true. That's true. All right, folks, uh, we'll really have to wrap it up here. Um, thanks for being here. Really enjoyed it. I uh, had a great time. I hope you had too, and looking forward to see you next time. Yeah, guys, uh, we will have a really, really good webinar about, about uh, candlesticks. Also, don't forget to register on Facebook, to like us on Facebook, because we always post our trading setups and analysis there, so be with us. Thank you for attending our webinar. And see you see you very, very soon. Mm. Cheers everyone. Cheers. The organizer.